Okay, welcome to another installment of the NUMA of Now podcast. Richard Blankenship here at your service for encouragement and growth. I'm going to continue my reading from Emma Curtis Hopkins, her work, High Mysticism, Studies in the Wisdom of the Sages of the Ages. So uh, we start here with the Upanishads, quote, Thou canst not behold me with thy two outer eyes. I have given thee an eye divine. So turning the page we have, <clears throat> This fleet, subtle sense is our incorporeal eye. It is the one faculty of our immortal soul, which we continually make use of. It is the creature made subject of Maya, not willingly, but in the hope of redemption of the body, as Paul wrote to the Roman Christians. The exaltation or lifting up of this sense towards that vast, vast countenance ever shining towards us as the sun in his strength is our way of return to the source whence we sprang forth. It is the path of light. It is the Tao. And then the Tao Te Ching. Make use of the light, returning again to its source. Thy body shall be free from calamity's course, and thou shalt train with the eternal at length. And then this is a quote from Lactantius. Lactantius. Quote, Man alone of all the animals goes in quest of his origin, and perceiving that the highest good is to be sought by him in the highest place, looks to his maker. I think my volume might be a little low. I'm just going to hold the microphone and try to get a better sound quality here. All right, let's just finish this page. This is page two, by the way. It's really good stuff, and I have some footnotes. This looking faculty antedates mind, and though offering itself to the service of mind, transcends it in achieving power. For it is primarily what we most see and not what we most think that constitutes our presence, power, and history. Quote, it is not possible for anything to take place save in connection with an onlooker, reads an inspiring line in the Vedic hymn. If we exalt this swift sense or look unto him whose ever repeated mandate is, Behold me, behold me, we receive back over the track of our vision tonic and viability to the mind, endurance, and beauty to the body, joy and fearlessness to the emotions, integrity, and intrepidity of the moral character. All that we think is made up of objectives toward which we have directed this deathless, achieving visional power. All of this posit we call body exhibits is the set of accretions that have come over the inner visional track. Thou, I'm sorry, that thou seest, that thou beest. We collect sadness and depression from directing this mystic eye toward human faces. For this attent did Solomon weep so loudly his retainers trembled. Sanity and soundness are the characteristics of the mind of those who do not project their prehensile vision toward objects that gratify the five outer senses. They who see toward the heights are invulnerable to honor or contempt, praise or despair. Their probity, sincerity, and courage lapse not. Okay, quote, For thou... (laughs) For that thou seest, 
man, that to become thou must, God, if thou seest God, dust, if thou seest dust. With eyes closed, still let the gaze be heavenward, there on, their fa- on the fair unspeakable heights is the home whence we all came hitherward to view the ways of destruction. And from the Psalm of Moses, Thou turnest man to see destruction, but sayest, Return ye children of men. Unquote. To look upon with the mystic eye is to start on the saving Tao. Quote, Look unto me, and ye be saved. I will turn away your captivity from before your eyes, when ye turn unto me, seeking my face, wrote the two great prophets, Isaiah and Jeremiah. With the flash of one hurried glance, I attained to the vision of that which is, and thou didst not give me any peace till thou was manifest, to the eye of my soul, cried St. Augustine of Tar- Targasti, Target, Targast, Targaste, don't know, in one of his illuminating moments. The farther toward the celestial zenith we send the limitless eye, the deeper is our assurance of our own divine origin I can find. Order and beauty hide their sublime ministries till on the Tao's magic path the tireless vision speeds onward, speeds toward the origin of beauty and order. Quote from Plato here, In heaven there is laid up a pattern which he who chooses may behold, and beholding, set his own house in order. The time has now arrived at which they must rise the eye of the soul to the universal light, which lightens all things. With the eye ever directed towards things fixed and immutable, which neither injure nor are injured, these they cannot help imitating. But I quite admire the difficulty of believing that in every man there is an eye of the soul which by the right direction is reilluminated and is more precious by far than ten thousand bodily eyes. Okay, I think I'm going to stop the reading there at this point and just wrap up in a few moments, a few breaths. collecting myself after falling into the fray of an author's words on the page. Uh, I just love it. I just love this book. It's a difficult read. It's profound in its layering. And I'm just scratching the surface, basically. You know, this whole effort to have these discussions is, is really for mutual healing I want these episodes to be uplifting, and I want them to encourage you. You know, the whole idea of empowering others through the Word, through our voices, standing up and being counted. And nothing about what I'm doing here is about followers. I just want to make that clear. What I'm doing here is an invitation. It's an open invitation. And we just invite you along for the journey here. You don't have to like me or all of the things I say. But we all have our own lenses and perceptions. And some of the things I say are direct. They may come across as being harsh or abrasive. But I just encourage you to uh, feel through that and inspect your own assessment of what's happening here. It might take a little longer than expected to join the currents and to dive into these waters that I'm inviting you into. You know, I believe that there is a sacred silence that we can use and work with. There's a silent war and there are silent weapons but I want to remind you that there's a quiet revolution.
that revolution starts with a personal revelation, something that happens within ourselves long before it manifests upon the tapestry of the collective scenery. Everything I want and everything you want is on the other side of fear. The opposite of courage is not cowardice, it's conformity. That quote is by Rollo May. We need to make a strenuous effort, a dedicated effort to get in touch with more life, love, and light to add more vitality and energy to who we are, what we are, why we are? Do you have a big enough why? Do you know what you stand for? Or are you falling into a vortex or a trap of standing against things that you no longer tolerate? There's a certain aspect of attracting every time we attempt to negate I do not support war on drugs or war on terrorism. What I support is a a peace march, a unity conference. What do you stand for? Add energy to that. It's important to recognize when you need to recharge your batteries and rest and go into that sacred silence. You know, I teach here action, massive action. Just get out there and do, 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 over and over again. And there, that's part of it. But within that, that pace, within that determined passion and that internal fire of creativity that burns within, within you, within that whole realm of action... We need to just attune ourselves to the notions of rest, recovery, and recharge. So I think that's pretty much all I have for this installment. Uh, I have every intention on continuing the high mysticism readings as kind of a mental primer before I go on my my own vulnerable and confused discussion. We know confusion's not from God. I understand that God is a gentleman. Eventually, I want to bring in this concept of retro causality. Maybe I'll seed a little bit of thoughts for the next episode here. Um, the idea that you know, spiritual insight kind of comes from the future. The idea of, you know, meeting God halfway. Not everybody's going to be a master of their own lives and be an actually self actualized human being, but if you can get halfway or if you can start the journey, that's really important. And that's quite an accomplishment. And really, a congratulations is in order to those of you who can sit with me in their own heart-centered awareness to assist me in the, the larger picture, the larger vision here of encouraging others and picking apart the concepts that we are trying to communicate. We're always a work in progress, process, process. Science, you know, it's never a destination, always the ride. It's just a ride, man. So, yeah, we'll talk about Bill Hicks at some point, too, and George Carlin. I want to I bring those two fellows into this conversation um, as probably my two favorite comedians. I have other favorite comedians, and one of these days I might even tell a joke. All right. Well, big love to the family and the tribe, and, you know, 
get into your own heart space and give yourself permission to be you too full on this wonderfully awe-inspiring 24-hour cycle on planet Earth, I guess. Peace profound in the Numa of now.